Hi guys, well today Intel has unveiled their new 6th generation of processors codenamed Skylake. So along with these new chips we've got a new chipset, Intel Z170. Now in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Core i5-6600K, the Core i7-6700K and the MSI Z170A Gaming M7. So both of these chips are unlocked meaning that the multiplier isn't fixed so you're going to be able to bump up the clock speed and overclock. Now the 6600K and the 6700K require a new socket so we can't use 1150 so instead we've got the 1151 and Z170 chipset and that in itself brings a whole host of new features including DDR4. Gaming M7 is one of MSI's top end Z170 boards and throughout there is a complete styling refresh with a black and red theme and as we're going to see beyond the standard chipset features Gaming M7 brings with it quite a large selection of unique attributes. So where do we stand with pricing? Well these prices by the way are subject to change but we can expect 6600k £190 in the UK, $239 in the States, 6700k is going to be £270 in the UK, $239 and then the board the MSI board is going to be 160 to 170, $220 in the States. So pretty much in line with previous launches that we've seen and this could be a worthwhile uh, upgrade path for you guys who are perhaps still on Sandy Bridge, Ivy Bridge or dare I say it, even Haswell. Now if you guys want in a bit more detail all of the benchmarks please head over to the full review which is in the description. Right guys, well here we have the retail versions of Skylake as you can see on the left hand side there we've got the uh, Core i5-6600K and then we've got the Core i7-6700K so this is the new retail packaging, looks pretty good and then the only thing really to say is that we've got this new socket here LJ1151 and then over on the reverse there we've got a bit of a preview of the chips there and then the fundamental features running down the top so this is obviously retail packaging uh, fanless version so we will get that three year warranty. So looking at the Skylake chips there next to the 4790K that's the Devil's Canyon there isn't very much to separate them. The heat spreader retains the same appearance and the overall dimensions are identical as well and in fact just going off the size there even though the Skylake chips do need a new socket if you have a cooler which is designed for socket 1155 or 1150 then it will fit over these CPUs. Now one area which Haswell came under fire from was the thermal interface material. You know, temperatures there were typically pretty high and especially if you're applying overclock and uh, you bump up the CPU voltage. But things have greatly improved with Skylake as you're going to see in the full review over on Vortez.net. Over on the reverse of the 4790K compared to that 6700K we've got the same contact pad layout but the Skylake chip has actually got a greater number of capacitors and changes to the circuitry. Okay, so let's now talk about the specifications. So turning to that Core i5-6600K, we've got a base clock there of 3.5 GHz, uh, 4 cores, 4 threads and 6 meg of cache. And then we've got the usual Intel Turbo Boost 2 technology and hyper-threading. Now another key difference if you're moving up to Skylake on the desktop platform is the support and the requirement of dual channel DDR4. So this used to be exclusive to the X99 chipset but we're now going to see it hit mainstream segments too. And the other thing also to mention is that we've also got the support now for Intel HD Graphics 530. So in the full review we've got the benchmarks there showing how this integrated graphics chip compares to previous generations. And then looking at the Core i7-6700K, we've got the same features except we've got a base clock there of 4 GHz, 4 cores, but this time 8 threads and 8 meg of cache. So that extra cache there, the threads and the greater clock speed is going to allow us to store and access more data and will translate to faster performance in certain applications. Now again, if you guys want to know how these processors perform, please head over to the full review over on Vortez.net. But in terms of the overclocking, we managed to hit 4.7 on both chips pretty easily and you know 4.7 on that 6600K is quite significant. Now just another thing to mention briefly is that the BCLK is no longer limited to 100 megahertz on Skylake as with previous generations uh, so overclocking now adds in more variables so that you can play about with a ratio and the BCLK so it's not just controlled just by altering that ratio. 
Right guys, well let's move on to the motherboard. So here we've got the MSI Z170A Gaming M7. So this board works hand in hand with those CPUs which we saw a moment ago. And of course it incorporates that new Z170 chipset. So on the front there we've got a bit of an impression of the board itself. So that looks pretty good. And you know for packaging for a motherboard this is actually pretty nice. Nicely designed and also double reinforced. Uh, good quality so we're not going to worry about that when it's uh, travelling with the courier. So over on the reverse there, we've got the key features. So technical spec in the corner there, and some of the uh, fundamental features which we can expect from this board. USB 3.1, uh, twin turbo M.2. So if you've got two M.2s, then you can pair those up and RAID them. That is really nice, and obviously DDR4 boost. So those are the features there. Uh, but really what we're interested in is going inside the box and having a look what we get. So here is the board comes inside this tray here and uh, inside an anti-static bag and then here we've got the accessories so we've got those quick connect uh, to pair up with the front of the case we've got the driver CD with the uh, software user guide so that just helps you to identify some of the features uh, pinpoints uh, some of those uh, technical specifications and also helps you through the BIOS and any uh, fault problems that you've got any of those codes from the LED debug We've got these sticker sheets here for the storage, so uh, if you want to pair up some of your uh, devices and, and obviously know where those go, identify them. We've got the quick start guide uh, for those of you guys who perhaps need a bit of help for installing the CPU. We've got this humorous uh, door hanger here for the gamers out there. A bit of a thank you there. And rear IO shield, which you can see is black and red pairing up with the theme of that board flexible SLI bridge a series of uh, four SATA free cables and then we've got that case badge okay so here is gaming M7 and we've only had a small number of Z170 boards in so far but this one is going to be hard to beat on the styling MSI has done a fantastic job there in the creation of this board so the PCB has a matte black finish and then we have those stunning heat sinks which make use of the matte black again and then we have that lick of red paint. Now that shade I would probably say is close to crimson. Gaming M7 also uses a brace which sits over the rear I.O. ports giving them a bit of protection but also carrying through that styling. Right well let's get down to it. So the socket is LGA1151 so you're going to need a 6th generation Intel processor for this board. So we're talking 6600K or the 6700K. So although the socket uh, 1150 processors are incompatible here, you can still use a CPU cooler which is designed for 1155 or 1150 because the mounting holes are the correct diameter. Now covering the VRMs, we have a twin heatsink design uh, which has a single copper heat pipe running through it and underneath we have an 8 phase digital power delivery and over on the other side there we've got the 8 pin CPU power for extra juice and MSI has placed two CPU fan headers over by the memory slots so if you've got a cooler which uses two fans or if you're using an all-in-one solution then these are going to be ideal now with the introduction of Skylake Z170 boards now require DDR4 so we've got uh, four slots here which we can populate and kits are going to be available in dual channel and for our test rig we're using Corsair's Vengeance LPX DDR4 which is rated at uh, 3200 megahertz and you can see there that it pairs up pretty nicely with the M7 styling. Now there is support here for up to 64 gig and 3600 megahertz and of course XMP is also available. Now the M7 actually has an LED indicator on the board just by the 24 pin power to tell you if XMP is enabled. Now in a similar way to which we've seen audio being isolated for clean delivery, MSI has devised DDR4 Boost which separates the circuitry for better performance and less interference. And you can see there the red line stretching to and from that memory and socket. Now just next to the memory we have this switch called Hotkey. So with MSI software we can basically program keys on the keyboard to perform certain commands such as switching the system on and going into the BIOS. So that switch there basically enables or disables this feature. 
Moving along, we have two USB 3.1 headers. The port on the left is right angled in the same orientation as those SATA connectors. Now for storage, we have two rows of SATA Express and then uh, we've got a total of six SATA 36G ports because those SATA ports from the Express are backwards compatible. Just behind these ports, we've got a large heatsink which covers the Intel Z170 chip and that heatsink there is substantial in size and it should be sufficient for cooling. Running along the bottom edge of M7, we've got a useful selection of buttons and ports. So first of all, we've got a large red button, which after pressing, dispatches all of North Korea's Air Force. Are you kidding? This is MSI's Game Boost and is an automated overclocking button. Uh, basically, it has 11 increments, 0 being disabled, 11 bumping right up to 5 GHz. And next to this, we've got the onboard power and reset buttons. We've got the slow mode switch which is used for overclocking, that's extreme overclocking, uh, basically the ratio, the v core drop down to avoid uh, cold bug issues. Next to that we've got the BIOS flashback button which works in correspondence to the USB flashback port on the rear I.O. Basically you can update the BIOS from a USB drive uh, by using just your power supply so no other components are needed and this is a really good option if you're having a, a bit of a tricky situation uh, and you really need to update the BIOS version as soon as possible. And then lastly, we've got that LED debug which gives you the codes throughout the post and helps you identify or diagnose any problems on boot up. Moving on to the PCI Express, we have four PCI Express X1 slots and then we've got a trio of PCI Express 3.0 X16s. Now the top slot there is X16 and then we've got X8 and then X4. So if you're gonna be using two cards, the bandwidth is gonna to drop to X8 by populating both slots. So if you're planning to use a single card configuration, use that top PCI Express. Now something that we've not seen before is the inclusion of these steel PCI Express covers. And while they do look classy and add some style to the board, MSI have incorporated them for a reason. So it's for protection against damage and to provide some cooling. Now it's difficult for us to ascertain whether or not we'll benefit from any cooling, uh, but we'll certainly not complain about having steel PCI Express slots. It's a great idea. And we've also got some extra solder points on the reverse of the board to provide some extra strength, which is good as you know, custom cards nowadays are pretty heavy. Amid the PCI Express, there are two M.2 slots and both of these M.2s use PCI Express 3.0 X4, thus allowing bandwidth of up to 32 gig. But since we have two of these, we can now combine uh, two NVM Express SSDs and then apply a RAID array and make use of 64 gig. Now for audio, M7 uses the third generation of Audio Boost, which combines a series of features which includes the isolated area for audio components, metal EMI shields, Nahemic Audio Enhancer, dual OPA 1652 amps, Nippon Chemicon capacitors, and gold-plated audio connectors. And all of that translates to a decent onboard audio solution. You know, onboard sound nowadays has really come a long way, and this clearly highlights this very fact. And then we finish up at the rear I.O. section of M7, which is jam-packed with various ports. So from left to right, PS2 keyboard mouse port, two USB 2 ports, clear CMOS button, we've got that USB port there to work in conjunction with BIOS flashback, and then we have that group of video outputs, display port, 1.2 which supports up to 4K at 24Hz and then the two HDMI ports which also give 4K at 24Hz and then further along we've got that Gigabit LAN port which uses Killer E2400 and then two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and then another USB 3.1 Gen 1 with a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C below it and then lastly 8 channel audio with optical SPDIF and then covering all these ports, we've got that metal brace, that metal shroud to add some protection and to finish off that smooth design. So there you have it, Intel Skylake and the new Z170 chipset courtesy of MSI. So for those of you perhaps wondering whether to take the plunge and move over to this new platform, this new chipset, uh, it will mean that you need a, a new chip and new memory since we're now using dual channel DDR4. And really, I think if you're currently wanting to move on from the likes of Sandy Bridge, uh, Ivy Bridge, then Skylake is definitely a worthwhile venture for you. You know, you think about the processing power, which is impressive, and then you look at the memory bandwidth, again, especially good. And then you're obviously getting stuff like DDR4, USB 3.1, and M.2 support. 
But even if you prefer to you know, upgrade every generation, uh, the benefits might not be revolutionary, but we're still uh, getting a really exciting platform. Of course, with that return to the old school overclocking by being able to tweak the multiplier and that BCLK. And from our experience, overclocking is certainly profitable. You know, you've seen here from our testing that we're using retail chips here. Uh, we're not using engineering samples as many do in the industry. So this is a bit more of a, a reflection of um, a realistic reflection of what you guys can expect. And so we actually nudged that 6600K from 3.5 up to 4.7, didn't really get very hot and uh, didn't require that much voltage either. And then we look at this M7 board here. What a fantastic board we've got. Visual appearance, features, uh, the BIOS, the performance, overall just a, a cracking board really. And I'd have no qualms in picking one of these up myself. So guys, uh, please head over to the full review over in the description if you want uh, a bit more of an idea of uh, more detail and also the benchmarks. We've got the comparative benchmarks over clocking. Um, so if you guys want to know how these, this kit here performs, head over there. I hope you found this uh, video today useful. If you've got any questions, please ask away. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, it'd be great to have you join us. Thanks very much for watching and take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.